everyone, and welcome to Archived Conversations, a podcast about contemporary art and uh, politics. Um, my name is Mia. I'm the host, I suppose, of the show. And my guest today is Carino. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh -huh. Go ahead and, you know, give us a little bit of background about yourself, uh, whatever you want to share with the world before we jump into it. Yeah. Um, so my name is Chewy. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. And uh, my artist name and persona is Cariño, spelled with a K, K-A-R-I-N-Y-O. But basically, um, the reason why I chose that as my artist name was because I think a lot of my work is rooted in love and also in like softness um, and kind of being influential through that softness um, and through that like kind of affective side. And cariño means like love, affection, and attachment. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what this project um, under that name is about. Um, yeah, I am located in Seattle from the Bay. Started out just a couple years ago playing at community functions at Casa Latina um, and busking and then eventually started learning how to record like from my laptop. And now I'm a producer, produce my own music, have put out a project, an EP and I've been doing, I do so many different things, but we'll, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure we'll get into it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah, I am. Um, I, that was going to be, uh, you kind of answered one of my questions. Because <laughs> I think that I, I don't know, the only other time, I'm trying to think. Because I think that I met you after you and Ling had went to Mexico, or did I meet you yeah. maybe before that? Oh, that's a good question. I think I think I we met after. Yeah, yeah. And I was I didn't think I I don't remember that you um, were actively making music at the time that I met you. So I was yeah. wondering like when you kind of uh, yeah. started, or have you always been musical? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's interesting because when I was like little, I was really into singing and I would listen to people on the radio and I'd be like, oh, that's easy. I can do that. And like ever since I was little, I was like, you know what? I I'm going to be great. Like one day I'm going to be on the radio. I actually was played on KXP yesterday. So oh, that's so cool. Congrats. To my younger son, <laughs> I'm like, you were right. You had the vision. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I never took like that really seriously because you know I was not like really good at piano that was like the main thing on um, my like Filipino side of the family was like can you play piano or violin and I wasn't very good at either of those things so I was like I'm not a musician um and I I wrote a lot of poetry when I was like in high school and college um and then I didn't really I mean I always would play at like open mics and stuff mm -hmm. um but really, I started like performing in community um, in like 2018. So like very, very recently. Um, and that's around when I started like writing my own music. Um, and it kind of coincided with a friend of mine was also a musician. We like had a very close relationship and he like really believed in my voice and my music and was would like share my you know, recordings of me. And I was like, ah, like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. But he really <laughs> believed in me. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, and then he actually passed away. And so that kind of was a big igniter for me because I was like, I need to process through this grief um, and like anger that I have. He died by suicide and he had like a lot of challenges and just like systemic types of like oppression as well as just like mental health stuff going on and so I was like you know what I I need to keep doing the type of work that we were doing together and I need to like make music you know to to process through everything and to also 
share my experience with other people and to connect with other people during a time when I felt very isolated. Yeah, that's like, I'm number one, just so like, you know, I know I, I didn't personally do anything wrong, but geez, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's pretty, um, pretty gut wrenching, but it's something that you took mm -hmm. and like are ma actively making into something beautiful and that will continue to live on for everyone to listen to and like connect like with that energy so i really applaud you for that resilience i you know it it hurts like that you have like just dealing with those emotions um but out of it came some very beautiful music um so thank you for making this music for everyone um despite all of these things that go on not only in our lives <laughs> but the world like every day um yeah just yeah. you know taking all of that and making it to something that's like even and that's something i was going to mention too like even though there is a lot of like lyrics in your music that are critical of mm. the world and like mm -hmm. the systems at at large um there's still a lot of feelings of hope and mm. light that I noticed like throughout uh, the your um, self-titled album. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like what we need. <laughs> yeah. We like need that like. Yeah. I think like that that's something that I, I will you know what do people need that's a question that I try to ask myself you know when I'm making new music but also when I'm you know giving a performance um, because like I had a recent performance that happened after the shooting in Uvalde and yeah. I realized that you know I never had a space to connect with other people and to express that like you know I feel scared I feel angry you know what am I feeling like what wh how do we process this what's you know what can what can we do and how can we just like exist in a space together and not be afraid and so at that performance I like had the audience you know make a song together and like people participate with their voices and that was one of my favorite performances because you know it I want my audience and the people who listen to my music to be involved in it and to be a part of it um because I don't want people to listen to my music and be like wow that's so cool I wish I could do something like that like I want people to feel like my music is a part of them and that they are a part of the process um yeah <laughs> yeah that's really uh cool that you say that um because and i'll mention it now and we'll talk about it more later too um in your song defund the police <laughs> uh you say like we know how to care for community give us what we need and mm -hmm. I feel like that's almost encapturing like that idea too, where it's like, we're all in this. There's not like a space, there shouldn't be like a space between like a hierarchy, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like we're down on the ground, like we know what we need in order to like love, care and protect for ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like that's almost kind of, you know, just that idea of community at the end of the day <clears throat> and making yeah. people a little less of, like afraid of each other, I guess. 
in a world yeah. that is very scary. Yeah, yeah. I That's like one of my favorite lyrics on my songs because, you know, I think growing up, I never really considered that like we have the answers for ourselves and yeah. it was through like community work and being involved with organizations like Casa Latina which is an organization here in Seattle for Latinx immigrant workers to really like be like hey like the the police uh, which are like cannot be you know teared away from ice those two are interlocked that they are not taking care of us, that they're right. agents of fear within our community, that they're like terrorist organizations because they cause people to live in fear, especially undocumented immigrants. Um, I saw a lot of that when I was working there. And, you know, I learned that like, we have the solutions within ourselves right. and we should be talking to each other about like, what do we need? You know, what, where do we want our resources to be? Do we want our resources to be in um, like, you know, community organizations that help people with like housing and like food stability and, and jobs and like legalizing immigration and things like that. You know, do we, where do we actually want our resources? What would actually tangibly make a difference in our lives rather than being like, well, you know, hypothetically, theoretically, the police are supposed to help us. The state is supposed to help us when really, you know, we have the answers and, and yeah, we've been brainwashed to think that we need somebody to save us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it can't like living in, in this world can be very frustrating, but I feel like the most, the most I've ever felt like hopeful and uh a little bit brighter was when I was like around people like around like the people who are going through all the same things we're going through mm. not just like a uh, senator or whoever is like quote unquote in a position of power like it's hope it's it feels hopeless <laughs> it's like yeah. listening to them it's like well you're not why should I listen to you when you're not listening to me? Right. <laughs> so um, I wanted to ask uh, about busking, because mm -hmm. I know that's something that you have done a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, so can you kind of explain that? Because I don't think that's really something that happens where I'm at in Florida, oh, wow. um, because I think it might be illegal. That's nuts. That's yeah. Horrible. I think it's like soliciting. I think it's considered soliciting. <clears throat> That's so silly. Um, so, yeah. So busking basically um, is a term that describes street performing. Um, yeah. Wh whether that be, you know, playing an instrument, singing, dancing, whatever. Um, when I busk, I busk like Primarily, I would sing the ukulele and I would sing since I've been performing more at like venues. I haven't busked in a while. And because yeah. of co and because of COVID, um, you know, it's something that makes me nervous. But um, a lot of my busking, it did happen during COVID. So that was kind of <laughs> interesting. But um, yeah. busking is one of my favorite things to do. It's it's I think busking is like a manifestation of how art is something that always pushes my comfort zone. Like busking, sometimes it is illegal in certain places. And so mm -hmm. you're like doing a rebellious act by like sitting up and like singing to people and like asking for compensation for like making somebody's day feel better. And that is kind of scary, but also, you know, it's like, you gotta hustle, you gotta do what you gotta do. And that's kind yeah. of a manifestation of the way us artists work you know we have to just put aside our fear put aside you know whatever like society says that we should be doing or what's what what it means to be like a good professional type artist um mm -hmm. so I really like that one it pushed me out of my comfort zone and also it like built up a tougher skin for me like I think both yeah. busking and and playing out bars have been 
my best experiences and the places where I feel most comfortable because like literally a man came up and he gave me like 20 bucks to stop singing and I was like jokes on you like that was my biggest tip of the day (laughs) and his like his daughter came up and was like I'm so sorry like don't listen to him like you're so lovely um (laughs) And I've just had really amazing experiences with complete strangers, but also, you know, people will tell you if they don't like it. Um, Or like a lady came up to me and she was like, sweetie, I can't hear you. Sweetie, we cannot hear you. And I was like, oh, I guess I have to sing louder. Um, (laughs) Yeah. And that's like busking is great because that's where I learned how to belt. I had like, I I didn't know how to do it. And then I was like, okay, let me like, I'm singing here for like four hours. Like I got to sing loud and I got to not hurt myself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's almost like, um, plain air painting or whatever. Like when you're like outside painting the landscape like that, except for. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing. And I like realized that I would feel really angry or frustrated and that would, I would just sing really loud and I'd be so <laughs> upset and people would be like, oh, thank you. And I was like, wow, music is amazing because I can be yelling at people and they'll be happy. <laughs> like, and they'll like pay me for it. Um, so yeah, I think busking is like one of the most liberating and like amazing experiences like especially if you're trying to learn how to be comfortable with yourself and be comfortable with performing like throwing yourself out there and just doing it and like you know trying to like that that's where I learned how to catch people's attention like people are walking by and I'm like you I'm gonna I'm not gonna say like hey you like come over here but I'm gonna say it with my voice and I'm gonna find a way to make you turn around Uh and like I think that's such a valuable thing that you know not a lot of artists have I think a lot of artists don't know how to like catch someone's emotions but to me that's what separates like a great artist from just like somebody who likes to do something it's you have to move people and know how to use your instrument to make people feel an emotion yeah that's so true um it's almost like uh oh I don't want to say this but it's almost like selling it to someone it's like but you're not literally selling it to them um (laughs) yeah I, I mean I when I first started thinking more about making art more of, I guess, like a part of my identity, like being an artist, uh, I was so nervous to ever even take like my sketchbook or anything out in public and like be drawing in it because it's like, this is your own little, like vulnerable, personal, Mm. like little bubble that you're just kind of, do you think? And then if someone notices it, it's just like, it can be so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it's, it's really, um, really, yeah, that's really putting yourself out there, uh, literally like on the ground <laughs> with the people. Um, it's like, if you're performing and can, can capture some people who like didn't ask for the performance, it's like, well, now you're going to do great with the people who do ask for the performance right. and you're going to be that much more confident, um, in yourself and in your abilities. Um, but yeah. that, that's really great. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that person, that man oh, gave yeah. you $20 <laughs> to, not, to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> that was blown. Wow. I was like, yeah, it's like no one has ever paid me so much to stop <laughs> doing something like amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't and know. I think it's it was a cool story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At at the very least. Um Yeah. Uh so I also wanted to ask, um, kind of focusing on um your self-titled album, uh, Kitty mm-hmm. Neal. I wanted to ask, first off, um, I guess in the beginning stages of this process of making the album, you kind of gave us 
some of the backstory, but uh, do you have any any particular inspirations for the project, even just in terms of like music you were listening to at the time that was inspiring mm. you or yeah. anything along those lines? Um, it's interesting because I have so much music that I've written. I have like, yeah, like dozens of songs, many, many songs, enough to make like multiple like albums. Yeah. And, um, part of it was like figuring out, okay, what songs did I want to like kind of come together and tell a, some type of story, um, mm -hmm. on the EP and, um, the only like new song that I wrote was when I was young and mm -hmm. I wrote that actually as a kind of a submission for a grant. So there is like the Seattle Asian American Film Festival was like, oh, yeah. hey, we're looking for, yeah, we're looking for um, artists to submit like a video um, that kind of, you know, talks about your experience. Um, and I was like, okay, like, I'm going to submit something and like, it's going to be a whole project. I'm going to have a song and I'm going to do a music video with it. And I'm going to eventually like include my family into it. Um, like some interviews and stuff. And so that's kind of part of how when I was young was born, um, which it's interesting to see like my art that's based off of like a prompt or a theme or an application. And then my art that just kind of happens. Um, yeah. They're very, it's kind of different, but I, I think it's also valuable sometimes to like, create something that's that you wouldn't have otherwise created um yeah specifically when I was young a song that I was listening to around that time that really inspired me was Little Lies by Odie um which has like a really cool stru structure there's like in the beginning of the song it just is like these really beautiful ethereal chords and then yeah. there's like a switch in it where it like changes and then it goes to like be half time and I was like oh I want to have multiple parts in a song like that I think that would be so cool to take someone through like a cinematic journey yes. and that's kind of how I approached when I was young like the the change in the middle with like the cinematic yeah. like you know the 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 dialogue and then like the chord change that kind of was inspired by that's that song okay yeah that's I'm gonna go go over and listen to that because um, the the first so the first song on on this album is when I was young and that was also released as a single, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's like the first word that came to my mind was uh, ethereal. Mm. It made me it made yeah. me think about um, like especially you know that first half. It made me think about like when you're like in a pool but you're like underwater in the pool and you're looking yeah. up and it's oh like kind God. of bubbly and shiny because of the sun yeah I like that. that was exactly where I was at in that, <laughs> in that first half of that song um I love that. and yeah these uh it, it makes sense too that you will primarily uh I don't know want to say primarily but that you were kind of a, a writer maybe before mm -hmm. you started making music because mm -hmm. a lot of your lyrics are like very poetic and at times like very mm -hmm. poignant and it like it show like I just think that it makes so much sense that you were writing a long a, a lot longer like before mm -hmm. you eventually started making music and you um lay your voices a lot too yeah. though, which I really appreciate yeah. And that, those are all your, like, voice? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I did That's all the so voice, cool. and then I used, like, electric ukulele and put a bunch of effects on it. Um, and I did some of the beats on it. And then the rest, the bass and the drums are somebody else. Some There's some guitar, too, from somebody else. But, yeah, all the vocals um, were me. And I liked, like, doing... I like the kind of idea of blending like a higher like octave with a lower octave of the same like lyrics because to me it's kind of that's something that's a little bit androgynous too is it's like kind of 
I'm not just choosing to have a more masculine voice or a more feminine voice. I'm like Mm -hmm. doing both at the same time, which is something that I really love to do. Yeah, that's, I love that. That's so great. And it's very like beautiful too. Um, Can you hear me by the way? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure because my uh, video is a little wonky. So just want to make sure. Um, I also I wanted to talk about uh, one set of lyrics that are in the first song. Um, Living in the land of the free under a Catholic God, too afraid to speak about the hate they sowed in me when I was young. Or do you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. I think, like, to me, those words were, like, very, like, kind of like a jab. (laughs) They were very powerful. Yeah. And I was afraid to share that with my family. um, Because the song is about family so much. Um, And I shared it with my family, and it was just all love, which I thought was really cool. Um, but also it is a critique of the culture that I grew up in and the culture that I come from, which, you know, I didn't think that this song would still be relevant, like Mm -hmm. to the extent that it is, but it feels even more relevant now. Like I have, you know, I'm not afraid to talk about it, but my, you know, I have certain challenges within my family about, you know, surrounding Catholicism specifically, Mm -hmm. And just like a lot of cultural norms that I have many, I have many questions about like the origins of like, there's, you know, a big cultural norm of just like heteronormativity and, you know, you like, you marry a man, you have children and these are your roles. Right. And like, you know, men can be like sort of abrasive and like, you know, brutish and sometimes not have good judgment but like they give you stability and they like take care of certain things that that women cannot and I think just existing as a non-binary person and as a queer person it challenges all of those norms that are also hurting the people that are stuck within them and I think a big challenge is that I think I've seen movies like Encanto and like Mm -hmm. everything everywhere all at once and like beautiful movies, no spoilers, but like beautiful movies where there's some type of reconciliation and some type of healing, some type of apology from an elder. And I think that line is the line that hits me the most. So it's like when I was young, they said, don't question your elders living in the land of the free, which felt like when I was growing up, I was always told like, be proud to be an American, you're living, be proud to be living in a place where you're free, but also feeling like you're stuck and you're supposed to be, you know, respectful to your elders and respectful to the system that you're living in, even though they don't respect you, um, even, even when they don't respect you. And it took me so long to finally realize, like, if somebody doesn't respect me, I don't owe them respect. Right. Um, if someone is disrespectful to me, I do not owe them respect. And I think that is one of the words that I wish I could have told myself when I was young, that you respect yourself first. And if somebody is disrespectful to you and they tell you that you need to continue to respect them, then that is a toxic situation and you need to do what's best for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's It's so important 
to to recognize that I think or else as a as a person you can just get stepped on <laughs> you can yeah. get kind of uh I don't want to say I don't know if taking advantage of is the right word but like I mean I've been taken advantage of many times in my life <laughs> sure exactly and it's 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 again it's creating those um power structures where right it's like oh even it's like everyone around you is like telling you like you're so you should be grateful of you know the the right. freedom that we have here mm-hmm. but at the same time like your lived experience is mm-hmm. doesn't it feel free right. um, <laughs> everyone yeah. around me is telling me this but it doesn't feel quite right um yeah. and yeah like in in the song it, it, you kind of go through this you know story of i didn't know the words i didn't have the words to know myself i didn't have the words to heal myself and then eventually you come back around and say i'm older now and i have the words to know myself have the words to heal myself um it's like a, ni- a nice conclusion but then the 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 song kind of does a little switch up and um there's uh, at the at the end uh you speak in both um english and filipino Filipino, the same words that you say in the beginning. So yeah. Like, okay. okay gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And that part is actually um, a lullaby that my my Lolo, which is my grandpa on my mom's side, um, that he wrote in English and Tagalog. Tagalog is the Filipino language that my family speaks. And that okay. was kind of um, his way of trying to teach us Tagalog as, you know, children that were born here in the United States. And it's kind of a silly and funny narrative of like, you know, someone going to hunt and like, you see the thing, you hunt it, you eat it and you cook, you cook it and you eat it. And to me, like, it's kind of silly it's kind of funny but also it's like I think really beautiful because it shows this like cycle of life and like it shows how you can get nourishment from your surroundings and it also pays tribute to like the different kind of life that my Lolo had than the one that I had because he was a farmer and he you know he nourished himself off of like his surroundings and it's Absolutely. that's like the type of thing that I I would like to learn more about and yeah. I think I, it's hard to feel connected with my ancestry and the people that I come from when my life is so different and I think right it's like living in a city during this like postmodern like like yeah. late capitalism <laughs> moment that we're in is like <laughs> is like so dysphoric and so weird and I'm it like, is so weird I'm so tired all the time I, my head hurts from seeing so many screens like I know uh, I don't feel I feel like an android I feel like a cyborg like yeah right. <laughs> I know I think about this all the time too I'm like it's no wonder that like you know many of us are having like these mental health like crises it's because we're like doing all these things that like our brains weren't like <laughs> right they weren't wired to like do like why right. are we sending emails <laughs> yeah it's like I'm glad we're sending emails and stuff <laughs> that's how I was able to connect with you but it's like, yeah. just like uh it's like just the headaches that can come with it all of like it's 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 that meme where it's like 
I'm at an office job all day when I should be in a field eating berries. But it's like, <laughs> it's legit true. Like the industrial revolution was only like 150, yeah. 200 years ago. Like yeah. that's not that long in the grand scheme of like organisms existing on planet right. Earth. Like it's yeah. very bizarre. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think so. like, you know, older generations don't necessarily always understand like, why do you have these mental health issues? And part of it is like, you know, when I was growing up, I felt this sense of emptiness. Like I was, I didn't know where I was supposed to be. And I felt like I had to assimilate and I didn't have those words, but I, ha I felt like I had to assimilate into like American society and like, yeah. you know, American, like American type of like job, you know, the, the whole family system and everything like that. And I felt, I felt like I had to deny certain parts of myself yep. to get, to get there. And I think there was just this overwhelming sense of like grief and like confusion and like an unspoken emptiness that I didn't, I couldn't put words to. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to put words to it, but I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> uh, I have to say. You. Yeah. Um, and then just to be conscious of time, I want to talk about one more song um, oh. on the album real quick. Um, mm -hmm. Man, it's so hard because uh, I want to talk about them all. But uh, <laughs> I think another one that is uh, so something that I wanted to talk about was uh, the third song on the album, Defund the Police. Mm -hmm. um starts off with an Angela Davis sample uh mm -hmm. you know talking about what that actually means um which is just a huge misconception it's not simply about withdrawing funding for law enforcement and doing nothing else it's about re-envisioning it's about building a new but I think people don't tend to hear that and think and get defensive not realizing that it's it could it, it, it is something that could be for the greater good and like there are other solutions to problems right. other than a police state so I guess I just wanted to ask like when this song was written and um kind of the catalyst uh that made you um write it and that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so long ago. I wrote that song yeah. in 2017. And I honestly, I, I can't remember exactly like what it was that happened, but I think it just was like, you know, overwhelming like news about yeah. police brutality and, and also just the, how things, like I said, are tied up with ice and at yes. that time, I was working at Casa Latina as well. And it just was, you know, and I also used to work on a, um, the Weiss and Washington Immigrant Solidarity Network hotline where people would call in if they thought that they had seen ICE or if they had issues with ICE, if somebody had been taken by ICE. Right. And so every week, multiple times a week, I'd be talking to people who, you know, had all of these different experiences and and working with people like firsthand too that, you know, didn't have documents or that like had been in deportation centers before. And I just was like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to say things right, but I want to say something. Yeah. And I think that like music has been my way of trying to figure out where I, where I fit in the movement. And yeah. part of me was like, I don't know, should I write this song? I'm not doing like very like, you know, the like abolition work. Like I'm not, I'm not a leader in that place. So like, what right do I have to sing about this? But I was like, you know what? It's something that I believe and I might not have all of the right words, but I'm going to try. I'm going to put a stab at it because other artists that I really look up to, they talk about things that matter to them. Yeah. Like, like I think about, I used to, like watch this that clip all the time of Nina Simone being like you know especially when times are so desperate what can an artist do except for reflect the times that they're in and it's an artist's duty to reflect the times that they're in 
Um, and yeah, so I think that was just my way of being like, yo, this is how I feel. And also yeah. to start off my career, I put that on the, my, my first release because I was like, I want people to know from jump that like, I care and that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like water down a message. And then I'm going to try to, to educate people with my music, um, as best as I can. And and yeah. open up conversations and be like unapologetic and actually do something that is impactful with my art. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I feel the same way, uh, 100%. I think that even now, especially like in in this kind of internet age we're living in, I think it's so, so important that like people who are creative are doing things like writing music or taking photos or creating paintings about like the real like <laughs> impacts of like what is happening like in, in, in our government and stuff like in America today, like especially like later down the line like uh censor censor uh, excuse me censorship it's like right. that's kind of also part of why i wanted to start like recording like conversations like this too because mm -hmm. it's it i think it's going to be it might I, i'm hoping that one day like it will be important to be archiving <laughs> these kinds of things uh because we all know who the history books are like written by right, right. and for. So right. this is kind of like my way of kind of preserving some of like this history of people speaking out about it all. Um, <clears throat> because again, who, who knows later on? <laughs> yeah. I, I also just like in in doing research like for this pro podcast too uh there's there have been plenty of uh artists who specifically made work uh because they knew that the issues they were making work mm. about uh were being censored mm. um that these things weren't being seen by the general public so creating right. prints like a very popular way of doing that was uh creating a wood blo wood block print mm. and Wow. Making making multiple like editions of whatever message, you know, whatever print that they're trying to get a message out about. And it's like you can mass distribute that stuff. Um, yeah. And so that's amazing. I just think it's yeah, I, I that and like what what you're doing and and all the people I have lined up uh, to talk to, like, I think it's really important um, that we are trying to kind of make things that like mean something because it's like our lives are on the line. <laughs> right. Like literally, yeah. like it's not, yeah. it, it can't always be, it can't always be like sunshine and right. Cause yeah. we got to survive. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, um, and also I think like, for me as an artist, I think a lot about what type of artist do I want to be? I'm not just like making art and trying to get famous and, right. or go viral or something like that. I think that as artists, what kind of artist you are is also a part of your life's work is like, what kind of person am I? What type of artist am I is basically saying, what type of person am I? And for me, I'm very much inspired by Latin American artists like Latin rock is like my favorite genre and it's I've I love that Latin American art there's so much protest that's in, yes. in like intertwined and integrated into um, ingrained into Latin music and all types of Latin art it's a, po a popular art form that can educate people that Absolutely. can you know uplift people and that Latin American artists are oftentimes very political and they can be Absolutely. agents of peace they can be revolutionaries but they are oftentimes there are so many that are like so inspiring that you know 
they they touch people's hearts, but also like they they are doing something for their people. And so I, you know, when I think about what kind of artist do I want to be, I think about like I want to be like Victor Jara, who um, it was Chilean, and he was an artist. He's a beautiful, amazing artist. You should look him up. Like his his guitar is like so beautiful and ethereal, and his lyrics are just so poetic and so cutting. And he was like disappeared. They cut they cut off his hands, and that to me is like they saw the power that his hands had, you know, and, and so I want to be the type of artist who, who has that type of impact, who is so powerful that, you know, of course people are going to feel threatened. Absolutely. That was a great, strong (laughs) little wrap up to this. I love that energy. I love that. Like, <laughs> oh, now I want to go with Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, which is also yeah. why I think, you know, what everyone who I'm trying to interview is doing is like super important because it's like inspiring uh, at the end of the day. Like, it's going to inspire mm-hmm. people to also like take a step up in whatever way that they can. So, yeah. <gasps> Thank you so much yeah. uh, for letting us into your uh, brain on all this. That means yeah. so much. Um, I want to do, uh, give you a little chance to also like shout yourself out. Um, yeah, for sure. and so, so any future projects that you, uh, might be working on or, um, performances. Yeah. Um, so my name is Carino. That's K-A-R-I-N-Y-O. And you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Carino, K-A-R-I-N-Y-O. Um, I'm also on Facebook if you still are using Facebook. Um, and uh, most of my things I post on my Instagram. So I have some performances coming up. I'm playing at Refuge Outdoor Festival if you're here in Seattle. Also another festival um, called Indicator Species which is a really cool art, science, education type type thing. Um, I'll also be playing at Wild Rose, um, the, the like last lesbian bar in Capitol Hill uh, for the Capitol Hill block party. Um, I have a release coming up next Thursday of a sound score that I did for a film. So I, I do sound scoring as well. I'm like dipping my toe more into. So check that out on Spotify. Um, it's going to be on June 21st on Thursday. Um, if you're seeing this after then, it's already on Spotify. And be sure to follow me on Spotify. Check me out on Bandcamp if you'd like. Send me a tip. My Venmo is Carino, K-R-I-N-Y-O. Make sure to tip your artists. Absolutely. Make sure to tip and share the love to people who inspire you because we are doing the hard work we are doing the work that helps to heal society to lift people up and and to inspire and we're doing it all basically on our dime so absolutely give well, that money you if you so can <laughs> yes. yeah um i also just wanted to do a little mutual aid shout out to um mm-hmm. a person who is affected by a rent increase. Um, They're raising funds for housing and moving costs and they have a cash app. It's BLK Queer 24, uh, dollar sign BLK Queer 24. Uh, And then if you wanted to shout out any in Seattle, uh, Chewy. Yeah. Um, I don't know if like any one specific, like uh, an individual, but it's always yeah. good to donate to the Trans Women of Color Solidarity Network. They do really good work just to like uplift trans, non-binary women of color and people of color. And they helped my, you know, my friend get out of a moving situation, like a really horrible housing situation. So they're really doing amazing work. If you haven't checked them out already, check them out. Trans Women of Color Solidarity Network on Instagram. It, I think it is just TWOC Solidarity, but check yeah. them out. I'll also, I'll grab uh, any lyrics and I'll put them in the description too, um, cool. just in case, uh, you know, spelling or anything that gets mixed up. And I'll make sure to get that from you too. 
Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and give a couple bucks where I can. Ooh, you should do little viewer if you can drop <laughs> a dollar or two, please spread the love, um, help out your neighbor. And thank you again, Chewy, uh, Kenny, you. Mio, for taking the time thank you. for this Thanks interview. You. It means so much. And much yeah, go follow, go follow them. Yes. <laughs> All right, and I'll see you all next time. <laughs> okay, see ya. This episode of Archived Conversations was brought to you by my lovely patrons over on Patreon and you, the listener slash viewer. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you would like to get these episodes a week early, please check out Patreon. Uh, the link will be in the description below, or you can visit patreon.com slash Mia Makes It. And I hope to see you next week. Until then, have a great one.